So Wagwan. Wagwan. <laughs> All right, where you want me to start? Anywhere you want. Then I was born. That's perfectly fine. And I thought, you know, it had something to do with some turntable needles when I was born because music's been my life ever since. And I'm still in it today. So I won't tell you how many years later that is right now. Why not? I think that should be safe for okay. a later interview if we get the second one. Ooh, okay, we have to behave ourselves there. <laughs> is that a reason is that is that a why your surname ends with smart? Well, I, I should hope so, because um I made the right choice to go music and that was from my youth. I never diverted from the pathway. You know, it was always music. So I collected records, had my own mobile disco. You did? Yeah, you know, played at house parties and stuff like that. And you DJ? At clubs, yeah. So, you know, they didn't call it DJing at that time, but What was the DJing. name? Throw down some we tunes. Just, we just throw down, <laughs> yeah, just carry some tune and play, you know. <laughs> and then um, it kind of evolved because my dear friend who has passed away now, Augustus Pablo, we, you know, we got together and started to produce some songs. Pablo had his mobile disc, I had mine, and, you know, that's how we got together. And we, we started to produce songs called Augustus Pablo plays piano and melodica. And he has a you know, piano at home. We work out the songs at home. And we, we were still in school. This is, we were in high school. We save up some lunch money, book a half an hour. In those days, half an hour studio time. What can you get done in half an hour? Well, if you rehearse it with the band before you go, <laughs> you get way. a lot. That's the clever way to do it. Right. So we rehearse with the band. We go in and just roll the tape and we put on some songs. But whenever I, we didn't end up using those songs, that was just our introduction to producing. Um, the first song we put out was a song called Swing Easy right? under Hot Stuff label originally and then Pablo you know he went full fledged into the producing and it changed to Rockers where I went I kind of started to divert when we were recording those songs he was also working on his album for VP Records at that time, Randy's Java album. We were in the studio, so we used to make our own mixes to play on the sound. And that's how I started around the board, like, a little mm -hmm. bit. And then we started to take the mixes from there and, and go over to the Tubbies and cut them on to, in acetate to play them on the sound. That's how I met King the, Tobit. Okay, that's, that's the, the connection. connection is there. So he kind of went that way with VP right, yeah. and Clive, and you kind of went that way. No, we were still together. You know, he just did that album with VP. You know, he, he didn't do any more records but that one. He was producing himself. Mm -hmm. So we stayed together and we did like Cassava piece. Yeah. And at the same time, I, I, I was. Halfway working with with Tubbies, I was just learning at the time. You know, I used to go there every every evening and just stand and watch till I have to go home to uh, do my homework and get ready for school. And then, uh, you know, after I graduated school, I kind of went full time. Right. How, how old are you at this point? I mean, just to give us all an idea. I mean, you're t talking about in your teens. Well, I, we actually, yeah, it, I, you know, if I, I started collected records early, so like 12, 
conversion. Me and Pablo started going to the studio maybe around 14. 14 years mm. old. You're already paying half an hour sessions right. at 14 years old. Exactly. And then uh, when final year in high school, that's when I was uh, going to King Toby's. And then when I left uh, school full time. I mean, what? I mean, what do kids at 14, what was everybody else doing at that time? I had no idea because so it, in music, in a world by itself, it's like, it's a total different set of friends. The people at school that you have as friends, they don't understand the world because we put so much time and energy into producing a song or learning how to mix a record or whatever it is that you don't have time for anything else you know so is that a blessing or is that a that was a blessing if you if you know what uh, th that would be a lesson to kids now if you don't start from early i don't i don't think it makes sense to start because if you are 21 and you're trying to get in the business i'm not saying that the, that's the stamp, but it, it's already late. Mm. Unless you got tons of money behind you to really push what you're trying to do through. If you start when you're young and you want to be a musician and uh, you got the training in school, how to play, that's good. It's the same thing in learning how to play my sound, I learn to repair amplifiers, stuff like that. So it kind of, you didn't know that's where you're going to end up, but that's what you enjoyed and you were doing it and you went along, all of a sudden you just find yourself into this world called music and you're enjoying yourself. Just jumping ahead a little bit, yeah. well, what makes a good producer? But, uh, well, uh, I think, in my estimation, a good producer can feel, he can hear, he can see a hit record before it happens, from the first note. That's a, that, that's what a producer is like, you know. So he has he has to know when something's playing in the studio that this is going to be something it's that the masses around. are going to go crazy. That's that is his job. And my my first experience of that was, you know, I worked a lot with with Bonnie Lee, Bonnie Lee, Bonnie Striker Lee, and none shall escape the judgment. It was originally done by um, I forgot his name right now, but we had Johnny Clark cover it, right, and. When he, when we took the voice and everything, I said, yo, this record is hot. Mm -hmm. So I told Bonnie, I said, Bonnie, this is a hit record. You got to put it out. He said, well, all right, if you're feeling it, mm -hmm. mix it off, and I'll put it out. So I mixed it off, gave it to him, he put it out, and it was a hit. So that was like my first, I said, yeah, yeah. you know, I, 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 I felt you it, you know, and they started to trust me more from that point. And did you start to trust yourself more as well? Like, is that your first experience of actually... That was, as a producer, you know, I started to trust myself more in insane stuff, you know. Before that is like... It's like feeling, you're thinking, oh, this is great, yeah, this will make it remember good. Remember, I'm working under King Tubby's and most people didn't want to use me as an engineer. Mm. At that time, we got Tubby's had the name, the sound, everything. But Bonnie, he's always the man to give everybody a chance. So yeah, I'm saying, yeah, you need a Prince Philip. All right, go out and mix two of them tune yeah. And that's where it started. And how old were you by that time? Were you then in your 20s? About 18. 18? You're still a teenager. Mm -hmm. When did you fit all the girl action in? You fit that in when you go to the parties. Because remember, I was playing at parties, DJing. I used to play 
King Tubby's sound sometimes when, you know, like you or I had to go on tour, we'd have to go out there and make sure it, it's playing right. And we'd use other DJs, you know, like I, Roy, or you, Brown, or, you know, so we make sure everything is okay. So, so that's where you handle that. So, side. you know, if you are a star, <laughs> if you're a star selector, the girls come. Line up. Girls, um, How do you get to a point like, doesn't it? I mean, after when it, you first introduce on that scene, isn't it overwhelming as a me- man in your teenage years to have all these women flocking at you? No, but you know, we were used to it because we started. We knew music. That it's like they used to hire us to play for the girls' school. You know, Jamaica has like Saint Andrews I girls' school. Um, no, I, oh, I can't remember all of the names now, but... We, the girls or the schools? <coughs> Both. The, 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 the girls, I can't remember. <laughs> no, a few, but back in the 70s and 80s, you, you got to have some kind of talk. <laughs> you can't just... Yeah, you got to have some kind of talk, you know, to get, you know, to entice a woman to want to go out with you. Yeah. So you had to be pretty much multi-skilled in those days. Yeah. So you know. Guys get it easy now, I think is what. Yeah, it's easy. I say, hey girl, walk one, let me go. Walk (laughs) one. No, just thinking. (laughs) This might get me in trouble. (laughs) You never know.